Today I have two knit tops to share. They're perfect for in-between weather. I've used different types of knit fabrics. The design is super unique. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today I have knit sewing to share. This is a brand new top from Itch to Stitch and the name is Amador. Let me just say it in Spanish, Amador. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. As you can see from the liner, the first thing I look at at least is the neckline and you can see there's a V neckline there. Front piece is composed of two pieces, a top section and a bottom section. You can see that there are curved shapes there. The top front has a curve going like this with some gathers that will give you space for the bust. And beneath you have the same curve to match. At the back, you have a center back seam on the top area and then at the bottom area, it's just cut on the fold. <laughs> the sleeves, super easy to sew and fit dolman style with three quarter length it's meant to hit around the mid hip and it's meant to be a semi fitted design it's actually fitted at the hips you have a bit more space at the waist because the amador top is a brand new pattern at each to stitch it'll be 20 percent off through tuesday the 25th of april next week i'll leave you my affiliate link down below if you'd like to use it you don't pay anything extra but i do get a small commission back that supports the work that i do here on youtube of course i always want to give you something back so you'll see a lot of sewing and how to put this together if you like the visuals. I put a lot of effort into that and I really enjoy sharing it with you. You need knit fabric that stretches at least 50% horizontally and vertically. When you have a dolman sleeve style you do want that vertical stretch because as that dolman sleeve goes longer you need that stretch right here going up and down for you to be able to move your arm a little bit so I would suggest you check your vertical stretch. For this specific design and because of that seam that goes underneath the bust you really want this knit fabric to have great recovery. 50% stretch that's what it's meant to stretch right but when you look at your knit fabric look at the fabric composition fabrics like rayon spandex bamboo spandex modal spandex just have too much vertical stretch and not enough recovery unless they have a higher content spandex so most of these fabrics have only a five percent amount of spandex in there which gives you the recovery in the knit so if you have fabrics like that, I would suggest you don't use them for this design. The seam under the bust is just going to end up low. The gum is just going to end up stretching vertically. So yeah, don't use those. <laughs> but if you have another type of rayon spandex that has more spandex in the composition, say 8-10%, then that would be okay. And that is what I used in one of mine. <laughs> I knew when I started cutting it that this was going to be the appropriate fabric, even though it is a rayon spandex. It's not as lightweight and flimsy as other ones that I have and the higher spandex content makes it okay so that's a big asterisk there with this type of fabric I think an ITY would be okay just look for ones that are slightly heavier than others double brush poly is perfect cotton lycra is okay I use the sweater knit as well which is okay it has enough recovery I think an athletic knit would be fine any poly spandex blend a crepe knit just make sure the recovery is there for this design. Sizing goes from double zero to 40 US and that goes up to a 62 inch hip. With the newer knit patterns from each to stitch, you have a regular bust option and a full bust option. You use the regular bust option if your sewing cup is A, B and C. If you have zero to three inches of difference between your high bust and your full bust, but if your difference is more, three or more C, D, double D cup size, then the full bust option is gonna work best. When you look at the finished garment measurements, you don't see See the finished measurements for the bust and that's because that's just hard to determine because of the shape of the dolman you know a dolman sleeve has this type of shape and it curves underneath here which would become sort of part of the bust all this is not really measured just make sure you choose properly looking at the body measurements chart do not use the finished garment measurement to choose your size that's just so that you know how much ease there is either positive or negative at the waist you have a little bit more space around three inches and then it just goes off to a fitted hip with no ease. I chose a size 14 full bust to begin with. I knew that was going to fit this area and then I kept going with a 14 to the waist and then I blended out to a 16. Because you have a top piece and a bottom piece, if you need to blend here, you need to overlap these pieces with the seam allowance that you're using as it would be when it's sewn. Put those two pieces together, overlap them and then blend so that it's seamless between one piece and the other. That's super important. And if you want to do any length adjustments, you have a line on the bodice on this top area from and back and you have another one at the bottom if you want to lower it sort of at the mid hip level the only thing i did to make this seam be right under my bust is shorten my bodice by three eighths of an inch i think that is personal fitting i think the distance 
from right here to under the bust can vary depending on your height, on your cup size, on so many things. Your anatomy. I didn't make the bottom pieces longer or accommodate for my height. I wanted that mid hip length. I think that's a good length for me. I did film sewing for you and you'll see a mix of both of my versions in the tutorial. I sort of mix that up a little bit. You'll see my rayon spandex version and my sweater knit version. I sewed a lot of the seams with a narrow zigzag. You do need the sewing machine for some of these steps. There are others that you can do just with the serger, so it's sort of a mix. The general seam allowance is 3 8 And we're gonna see mainly how to put this V neckline together, which is super easy, the neck tape or binding around this area. And also how to join the front top piece and the bottom piece, which is the most interesting bit, so let's see. This is the bottom front piece that I've got on the ironing board. This is the fold and you have this shape coming up to a point there. Now a little below there, there are two marks and between that section, we do need to interface. When we sew the top front piece, that's the area that will be gathered in. And so this is meant to provide structure there. I just cut a strip of interfacing non-stretch, really lightweight, that's what I always use. But if you have fusible stay tape, then you can use that. This interfacing is pretty transparent so I can still see my marks underneath. If yours isn't, then you might need to mark them again. And the same on this other side. These are the two front pieces and that's the neckline right here. Eventually this will be a V neckline and there's also that shape. To eliminate vertical stretch out of your neat fabric, we're going to stabilize this with fusible stay tape or I just use little strips of interfacing I cut out myself. The seam allowance is 3 8 so you need to fuse these a little away from the raw edge so that you're sure to catch this when you sew. So I'm just going to fuse these on here along these areas. This is going to be the center front right here so I'm also going to stabilize that area. So now in this section any stretch that your knit had vertically is gone in this area of the neckline. You still want the vertical stretch all around your garment to be comfortable, especially because the dolman sleeves need it. But for this area of the neckline, you want to get rid of that vertical stretch. We're also going to do the same thing for the back neckline. There is a center back seam in the original design. For this sweater knit version, I am doing that center back seam. I'm just going to fuse along these two sections. I'm going to use white on one side because I ran out of the black one. This is all going to be covered by the band that will finish it off inside so I'm not concerned this is going to be seen. <laughs> Here are the pattern pieces for the Amador top from each to stitch. There's not many pieces. Each front and each back has two pieces. There are seams there. This is the top back. That's the bottom back. This one is supposed to have a seam right there. This top back piece is supposed to have a center back seam. In this case I folded the seam allowance away because I didn't really want to disrupt my print in there which is a stripe. It would look weird but if I make it in another fabric I'll, I will add that seam there. <laughs> this bottom back is cut on the fold. This top front, this top front is not cut on the fold and in this area you have excess volume that is going to be gathered into this space right here that we just fused a little bit of interfacing to stabilize. So the bottom front, this is on the fold but this one isn't. You can see the dolman sleeves are long like that. Little piece on the top is the binding that's going to finish the v-neckline. In the pattern it's called neck tape. Maybe you can see through the fabric but on the top I have vertical stripes and on the bottom I have my stripes going horizontally. This is a rayon spandex the stretch horizontal and vertical is exactly the same so that's why I'm confident to be able to do that if your knit does not have the same stretch don't do that because then this area might end up being too fitted and uncomfortable this is the top back piece and if you were sewing it as per the pattern you would have a center back seam there so that would be the first seam that you sew in this case I have these funny stripes and I didn't want to mess them up and because there's no actual shaping here it was a straight edge I just folded that seam allowance and cut this on the fold but this this is going rogue. Sew so your center back seam if you're following the pattern perfectly and then after doing that then we can extend the piece and align the front pieces on top right sides together. You can see how the V is having its shape right there for the front. So the next step would be to align these pieces and sew both shoulders. They are pretty long right here. It is a longer stolen sleeve. The seam allowance for the pattern is 3 8 of an inch. So if you were going to sew just with the serger, you would need to be trimming away about an eighth of an inch when you sew. But because I am going to be sewing my seam with a sewing machine at the shoulders, I'm trying not to trim any away if I can. I do like having that seam on the shoulders. I think it's just more structure. Now I'm going to sew my actual seam with the 3 8 seam allowance at the sewing machine using the narrow zigzag. There will be other seams that also need the sewing machine so don't just put it away and ignore it for this project because you will need it every now and then.
After sewing these shoulder seams, then we can attach the binding. Over here, I made a little mark at the center back and have matched that up with the band. And then you go off to this shape. This is going to be a V neckline, but it's not going to be finished traditionally. When you look at it from this side, it should protrude. And this tip right there should touch that area. There is a little mark on the pattern. You can't see it here because it's covered with my interfacing, but it should go past it quite a fair bit because when we sew this together, you need that excess amount of tape there. I decided to serge the other long end of my binding so when we fold it inside, it'll be neat. That's optional, but I just like neat edges. This binding is a tad shorter than the neckline underneath. You can see there, I've already put some pins, but I did stretch it slightly too much, but it's only very, very, very slight. After sewing the neck tape on, I've come back to this back neckline and snipped because it's curved. As always, we want to understitch to keep this binding inside. I'm going to push the seam allowance towards the binding and sew right there on the edge. After understitching, I flipped it to the inside, did some quick hand basting, and now I'm just going to top stitch 3 eighths of an inch from the edge. I've been using a narrow zigzag for this all. After top stitching, we had a little bit of the binding left over and when I searched this little edge, I sort of trimmed that little excess away right there and it's very neat. Same over here on this side. So now what we're going to do is line this up and this is what's going to close the neckline and give you the V. Here at the bottom, you'll see these little dots. We're supposed to sew this just up to there. And when we sew this, it's going to close up the neckline and give you the V. But we're supposed to leave this open so that that seam allowance is free to attach the piece that comes underneath. Okay, so that's sewn and only from the dot up. So you need this area open like this and this is what forms the V. So we're just gonna press that open. And that's how it looks like on the other side. There's no raw edges, it's all finished. Here on these top front pieces, you have a curved area and a little further away from the center front seam, you have a little mark there and a little mark there, both sides. So I'm gonna do two rows of gathering stitches here. One fairly close to the edge and then the other one at about half an inch. This is just a straight stitch with a long stitch length. I'm using 5.0. Okay, so there are my two rows of gathering. When I sew the other piece, the seam will end up around the middle right there at 3 8 This is the bottom front piece, and this is where we had done a little bit of stabilizing here between these two notches. And I'm gonna put this at the bottom right here and have the gathers on the top. This little dot right here is supposed to match this area right here. If you didn't have a seam here, you would have to snip into that to be able to extend this. In this case, because there's a seam and we didn't sew all the way down, we already have the space to open this up. So that dot is actually gonna match right there. So I'm gonna put a pin through here and just match it on this dot right there. Here where we have the gathering, we have one mark that's gonna match the one on the other side. And then following this, we're gonna see the other mark. As you continue on, this section all the way to the side will match one to one. Between these two marks, you can see the excess here. And this is what needs to be gathered in to match this length there. So I'm just gonna pull on my threads here and gather. seems like enough right here. So that side is done and now we just repeat the same on this other side. Okay, this is all pinned. I'm just gonna be careful in this area where the little dot is, where the V is, just to make sure I don't get any pockets there.
Okay, so here I'm at the spot where I need to lift the presser foot and just move all the fabric out of the way and keep going the other side. So that is that section where we sewed right there. This fabric is extended because the seam allowance is free and that matches the dot at the back. And then we have all this gathering. I'm just gonna remove gathering stitches right there. It's really easy, just pull them and they'll just fly right off. Now, when you look at this right sides up, this is how the look is going to be. You're gonna have that point right there, the seam, the V neckline, and then this curved seam with the gathers right here with the space for the bust. That is the main construction done that is a little different. What we need to do now is sew the bottom back piece to this area. It's just a horizontal seam. Then once that's in, then we can just sew this curved seam that involves the dolman sleeve all the way to the hem and do our hem. So that's really easy. Here is my original version. Now this rayon spandex, as I mentioned, has a higher spandex content. It's got 8% compared to the typical ones that only have five. So that's why I thought it was okay. And the stretch horizontally and vertically is exactly the same when I test it. That's why I was confident to cut my pieces in different directions. This is the original way the fabric is meant to be. And I thought it's okay. I'm sort of allergic to horizontal stripes, but I thought it's okay if it's in this area. And then the other ones, I cut them on the other way so that the stripes would end up looking like this. I love that these stripes are not typical stripes, that they have different shapes and sizes. And I think it shows off the features really well even if it is a print. So you can see the bottom shape right here that finishes in a point right there. The gathers there to give you space for the bust and the three quarter length dolman sleeves right there. With this one I went rogue. <laughs> I didn't do the center back seam because I didn't want to disrupt the stripes. You know, if you don't want to do the center back seam, I think you can opt out of it if you just fold that seam allowance away. There's no special shaping in this area. So that's just me going rogue. But on my other version, you'll see that center back seam. <laughs> this knee is white on the inside, so it's really easy to see what's going on here with all the seams when I turn it inside out. So you can see that center front seam and the curved seam that goes like that, the gathers. I've styled it super simple with just black pants. Very, very simple. So you can see how it fits. This is my Amador top from Itch to Stitch. It's for neat fabrics and mine is a size 14 full bust, blended into a 12 waist and then out to a 16 hip. I used the stripey rayon spandex that has the same stretch horizontally and vertically. That's why I was able to place some of these pieces in different directions. Dolman sleeve is three quarter length and up closer you can see more details. You can see the seam goes right under the bust right there and you also have a seam at the back. I think the feet is really good. I like the overall length of the top. The V neckline has the correct depth. It's a V that's super easy to sew so don't worry about that and that seam under the bust and that shape I think is really unique and really pretty. At the back it's just simple. It's just a simple round neckline and you can see the body seam at the back is hitting the correct length of my body. A little closer look at that little seam. It's not hard to sew. I think it's personal preference where you want it to hit. I wanted that seam right under my bust cup and that's why I shortened my bodice by a little bit. I think this is a really cool top. Being three quarters is great for in between weather and I love this black, white and gray little number. I'd sewn my second version with a sweater knit as per the original, the same three quarter length sleeves. I even hemmed it, I took pictures, all of that. I did have a little bit of fabric left over and I thought, you know, why not just make this full length? <laughs> why not just add a piece to extend the dolman? Now, I don't wanna go into the pattern and just extend that pattern piece. I think that's really fabric hungry. And just full length sometimes does not hang right when you're moving, can be uncomfortable. So I thought I would add a piece right there. So here you can see me in my sewing room with my top on. The hem is undone, the edge is raw because I want to measure from there. That's where I'm going to add the sleeve extension. On the top of my arm there, I figured out I needed about 7 inches extra. But from the inner area, 
the inner wrist it had to be a little bit longer about eight or nine figuring out those very basic measurements that i needed to create my personalized sleeve extension i went ahead and played with the paper mine is a sweater knit and i thought it was appropriate to make it full length so this is a hack if you want to see how i did it that comes next what i've got on the top are the shoulder seams pinned so that the seam allowance is removed as it is when it's going to be sewn this is the front part and this is the back part and this would be the long shoulder seam this is a dolman sleeve curve so that's what you see there i've folded away the seam allowance i'm going to sew so that's 3 8 of an inch it's folded away and that's where i traced the line right there following the shape now after that I drew my seam allowance out from there at 3 8 and that's how I'm going to attach this piece and you saw me doing some measurements with my top on. I know that from the top here this part of my arm down from the original I wanted 7 inches longer so, so that's the line that you can see there. From there I knew from the inner area of my wrist I wanted it 8 to 9 inches long I know it had to be longer. Because of the way the dolman sleeve hangs, I knew that if I made all of it at 7 inches, it would end up shorter in the inner wrist. So there needs to be a curve and, and one area needs to be longer right there and from there I drew a straight line at 8 inches and that's on both sides. This is the line where the shoulder seam would be so I just continue it down from there. Here you can see a B for the back part of the sleeve and an F for the front part of the sleeve. I didn't want a rectangle because I didn't want a really wide circumference at my wrist although you could do that if you want. So from this edge I measured in one and a half inches on both sides and drew a line. After determining how much narrower I wanted it I measured this new circumference and it's going to be okay against my wrist loose but not super loose and then I drew up my one inch hem allowance below that and this is going to be my piece I'm just going to cut it out This is going to be the sleeve extension, take the original three quarter length to full length. If I just extended the original piece, it takes up a lot of fabric and it can pull, be uncomfortable and not hang smoothly just because a dolman sleeve does not if it's super long. So that's why I thought creating an extension would be nicer. Here are my two little sleeve extensions that are going to lengthen my dolman sleeve. And you can see it's not a rectangle, it is wider and then narrows down towards the wrist. And because I drew them from the original pattern pieces, I wanted to mark which was the back side and which was the front. So I have these faint little red marks here that signifies that this is the back and along here you can have a notch that's going to match the seam of the sleeve. I'm going to get the end of one of these sleeve pieces and you can see the edge is raw here. When I calculated how much length I wanted extra I did it with the raw edge not with the hem already done and I calculated I was going to sew my extension with 3 8 seam allowance so that's how I figured out how much extra I wanted. And then on my piece, then I went ahead, added hem allowance to that. So this would be one of the pieces. Okay, so here I have my sleeve. This that you see here on the top is the front of the sleeve. And you can tell because it's narrower. So you can see that the back goes over a little wider towards the front. So I want to take my sleeve extension piece and put it just like this. The seam at the bottom is going to match that seam, but I won't have a seam on the top of this extension. And over here, you're going to have a little mark. You want the little mark that you've made for the back part of the sleeve to be at the bottom. And all I'm going to do is just put my hand in through here and slide my sleeve inside. And I'm going to end up with right sides together right here. This seam is going to match this seam here. And I'm going to sew them in opposing directions just to avoid bulk there. And then as I go along here, it's one to one I'm going to see the mark that matches the seam that I joined on the paper and that's going to match the seam right there on the top of your arm so that matches right there and then we go off into the back part of the sleeve and this is the back part because you can see I've got it marked right there so everything's going to match I'm just going to sew this together on the round I'm going to use my narrow zigzag at 3 8 and then clean up with a serger Here is my second Amador top in a sweater knit. As you can see, this one does have the center back seam there, so I did it as per the pattern. For the binding, I used a cotton lycra instead of the sweater knit. I just think it's easier to work with, less bulky like that. You saw me stabilizing all of this neckline area, so it's really stable. Same as this center area here, nothing's going to start stretching or sagging down, so I think that's helpful to keep the shape around this area. And then with the print, it sort of gets lost a little, the features. That's why I showed you the other one first. It was easier to see. 
but I did manage to sort of put this print feature right there in the center. So I did think about that. Here is my full length sleeve. So it's got that piece attached. Okay, that's how it looks inside. Neckline finish, super easy V because you just finish it and then you sew the center making the V. Here is my sleeve extension. You can see that the top seam at the shoulder does not continue onto this sleeve extension. And then there's a seam at the bottom and it tapers into my wrist. It's still nice and roomy. It's not super skin tight, but I didn't just want a rectangle there. I just don't like doing that. So have a go at that if you want to try and have some fun. There is my center back seam. I did serge and press the seams open because that's how I like to sew. I did take some pictures of this one <laughs> when it was three quarter length. So you'll see this one styled two ways. One when it was the original three quarters and then after when I've added on the extension, you'll see it in a different style. One more formal, one more informal. So let's see. This is my second Amador top from Each to Stitch, this time in a sweater knit and I had a lot of fun figuring out print placement there so it made sense. I have the original three quarter length sleeve and no I adjustments of length from the bottom pieces but I did shorten my bodice and up closer you can see that it is a fairly fitted top there's not much ease at the hips at all and that curved seam goes right underneath the bust I had to shorten the bodice to achieve that I think that is personal fitting that is going to be different for everyone I love that it's not boxy that it comes in at the waist and I love this mid hip length I think this looks great with a pencil skirt like this one this is a Quebec skirt from each to stitch and the depth of the neckline is really good I think it's helped that it's stabilized before sewing on the binding so there's no stretch there it's not going to stag and go lower as you wear it you can see a closer look at the details there is a back seam right there now I am going to add a sleeve extension there you'll see in a little bit and overall I think the design is super unique I am going to add a sleeve extension here as a hack to just make this sweater knit full length you'll see that next and also a different look a bit more informal <laughs> not a skirt so yeah you'll see that next Here is the same Amador top in the sweater knit that you just saw. I think the wide leg pants suits the look also because the top is fitted, it's not boxy, it's not long. So having something wide on the bottom I think balances out the look. This time I added my own sleeve extension. It is shaped, it's not a rectangle. You can see how to do that on my channel and then you can just have a full length sleeve if that's what you like. I think that was nice for the sweater knit and I love that this top can be whatever you want it to be. You can style it so many ways. I think styling is so much fun I enjoy it a lot and I love taking a garment and making it look a little dressier or a little bit more informal it's one of the best things I think this was a really fun top to sew, a super unique design, something different. I really enjoyed it. I ran out of time to play around and make one with a shorter dolman. So it can't be that short because it goes wide here. So I think if I could get away with a little above the elbow, I would be happy and I would have one for hotter weather. I love how this design can be for anything. It can be informal, it can be formal. It just depends on your fabric and the styling, which is always really fun. Remember the Amador top is 20% off through next week, Tuesday the 25th of April. My affiliate link is always down below. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed sewing something so different. That's all from me and I'll see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye.